but it's okay. I looked up Spider-Man No Way Home on IMDb. Whoa. Oh, hey. Jeff. Checking. I knew uh, it. Here we are. Boom. That's a bell noise. Do you have your own soundboard, too? <laughs> I have a triangle. Oh. In, in cl my hand. <laughs> close enough. Just, you, got, you got real sounds. You don't need a board. You, you got it all figured out. That's awesome. Uh, all right, I have the IMDb page open. We talked about Venom, Let There Be Carnage earlier today. Now we're talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. And I thought this movie was better than the Venom movie. And I didn't, don't, I'm not even a huge fan of these Spider-Man, these newer Spider-Man movies. The main reason that I'm not is because they're interconnected so much with the MCU and I prefer a more standalone Spider-Man. I believe that the Spider-Man universe is more than enough to suffice to be an entertaining film. You don't need to pull Iron Man, Doctor Strange, or the Avengers, all that, and put it in to Spider-Man. Yeah, I, and, I have thoughts yeah. about like um, that in different, in, well, that in relation to X-Men, like, yeah. I know a lot of people talk about like, oh, where are the X-Men? I guess, well, they like, there is one, like, there is a, a thing that came up in a, in a recent movie, but, like, um, yeah, I always thought, like, just from, like, the X-Men movies alone, it's, like, there are fucking so many characters. Truthfully. Uh, I don't know how you could do that with, like, the MCU anyway, but, yeah, same as Spider-Man, I guess Spider-Man has just, like, a lot. And then there's, like, because, like, I think he's... Had a lot to do with um, like Daredevil too, right? And the oh, absolutely. What's his name? Kingpin and stuff. So like, yeah, yeah, it's just it's all connected. That whole, all of it. The whole franchise is just like a beast. It's like. cool. It's cool in a way, but it gets to a certain point where you it relies too much on the other media. You have to watch or understand all these different shows and movies to understand the movie you're watching. Like, you have to head watch WandaVision. You have to... And it's crazy, because I don't watch WandaVision. And there's not much reference to that, but in the at the end, there's a, they have a trailer for the Doctor Strange movie. And I think to watch that movie, you kind of need to have seen WandaVision. But the, the, I digress. There's just a lot of interconnectedness. And it's it's a little overkill for me. I like I yeah, the old Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire. Which is why I like this movie, probably, is because they they bring back the nostalgia from the old movies. And that's probably why I like this one uh, more than the other two newer Spider-Man movies. Yeah, one of, the, um, one of my favorite things on YouTube right now is just, like, all of the Spider-Man memes, like, with the, you know, Bully Maguire and like, all yeah. of the... Oh, yeah, Just, totally. like, random edits people do. Like, people get really creative with just, like, Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Yeah, because there's so many funny little things in it, and people can, you can say they're a little goofy, but that's, that was the point, you know, they were comic book movies, I think they're the best, even Spider-Man 3, I know it's not, it's the weakest of the three, but he didn't want to put Venom in there, he was forced to put Venom in the third Spider-Man movie, that's why there's too many villains as one of the main problems in that movie, but... And the silly stuff with the dancing, that's funny. Like, I don't know. I, I, I really yeah. I actually like Spider-Man 3. Right. I, I like their old, like... Like... I, 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 like, I appreciate that they brought back uh, Jameson in this. Yeah, because who like, else who else could do it, right? And But they made him look I mean, a little he's different. amazing, right? But and, like, and they changed... I think, like, his most iconic lines are from, like, the old trilogy... Oh, absolutely. Give me pictures of Spider-Man and stuff like that. But um, he was good in this, though. Uh, absolutely. You, it's good to see him in the role again. And I do like this. Friends! <laughs> Give me a violin! Yeah, exactly. And I like the take they did with making him basically like Alex Jones. Uh, like selling the... That's clearly what they were sort of... Even the background is similar to Infowars, uh, the Alex Jones show. But And he sells like bone marrow or whatever but and like supplements and they show him selling supplements on this so it's clearly trying to make him fun of Al alex jones kind of and i liked i actually like that there's a lot of references to the older movies and that again is why i like this the most but some of it is a little cringy 
like there's a part where um what do they say they keep milking the line with great power comes great responsibility and i get it i get it it's a big part of all the different spider-man stories but it does feel a little bit just tacked on really hard uh and that was one th that's a minor note i did generally like this movie and i liked a lot of the things uh one of my buddies really hated this line but i liked it they referenced the meme in the first movie where willem dafoe is like i'm somewhat of a scientist myself uh they yeah. they have him say that line again in this movie and i liked it i think it worked he said it exactly like he said it in the first movie uh so it's i think it worked perfectly and was really funny um and then this movie made me laugh throughout generally the good action scenes obviously there's just usually in my opinion too much cgi in these movies but that's just something that's with just a part of it I'm not, it's not going to be changed it's just a part of it i don't it. know i don't know if like if they like de toby mcguire but he looks really weird he like, I, the whole time like it's we just haven't something that's, like disturbing about his eyes we haven't seen him for a while maybe he's gotten work done i don't know i thought he just looked a little older i thought he looked fine uh, but that's fair. He did look different, uh, that's for sure. Uh, but I like the, the back and forth with the Spider-Mans and some of the best. They they reference how Tobey Maguire is the only one where the webs actually come out of him, because that's not in the comic books. All the other Spider-Mans, uh, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland, have to make their web goo, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that I thought that was fun, how they referenced that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This movie was definitely the best out of the these three, in my opinion. The, and these all these movies though are are maybe a little long, but this one I think has the best excuse of being long because of all the different characters they have to flesh out in it. There's like five villains and three Spider Men, and plus all the other regular supporting cast, of course. So there's so many characters, and it's like they actually did a good job considering that. I think they used the time relatively well. It did drag a little bit at the end. I think they could have cut it like 15 minutes or so. Yeah. It was, it, I, f I felt like it came to an end and then 15 more minutes happened. And I was like, okay, could have ended. But, you know, I digress. Still a pretty good film. Pretty fun. Uh, let's look at the IMDb page. But Jeff, you have anything you've been hankering to say about it? Well, I don't know, just like lately I've been thinking a lot about the, the old movies. And actually one of the things that is kind of missing from all of these, I think, including yeah, probably the, like, it's like the, the trilogy as a whole and like the Marvel movies in general, like what's missing a lot from like the original like Spider-Man movies is, or like a lot of these like just random scenes were like, some extra like some rando in the crowd just like says something and it's like something iconic like oh he stole that guy's pizza or <laughs> go spidey go you know it's yeah. like in the first in know. the first in the original I don't know why but like i think like there's like a general trend in in these mcu movies because like they're so trying to fit so much in like especially a lot of like these superheroes and like superhumans and stuff it's like you rarely get any moments of just like the public or like just normal human beings like reacting to things. I I agree. Uh, it's it's a lot of cartoony reactions. But back to the Tobey Maguire movies that that has been made fun of to death with the, how the extras overact a little bit. There's some really funny uh, lines. Like there's. Like, all these people are reacting relatively normal, like, oh, look, there's Spider-Man. And then there's one moment where it's like, go, Spidey, go! And it's, like, r rolling on the floor. It's pretty funny. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's really fun to watch the background actors in movies like this. And movies in general, honestly, sometimes. Because you never know what they're doing. And sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Because you're not really supposed to focus on them. But sometimes they're doing weird shit in the background, and it's fun to look. Yeah, like, I mean, that's, like, a general thing I've been finding kind of weird about the latest like MCU movies too is just like mm -hmm. we're getting really far away from like anything humanly relatable it's like everyone's like gods and magic people and they're going through multiverses and like doing a bunch of shit and then like that's a good point you never really get like just I don't know 
people well, are trying to save, like, doing normal things. <laughs> I totally agree, because uh, Spider-Man and Marvel in general, like, their slogan at one point was superheroes with problems, because the alternative was heroes like Superman and shit, who didn't really have, like, hum normal human problems. They just had to deal with bad guys. But this gives them more depth and that's why it's more interesting and I agree completely when you say there's so much of the supernatural but they to be fair they do have they do touch on the problems the like them trying to balance life and being Superman or and Spider-Man I mean or whatever it is but I do agree with you that there's a lot of uh, the over-the-topness yeah. of it I don't I don't know if you've seen um, the show Miss Marvel uh, no, I have not. I've, I've heard of it, um, though. Yeah, like, it's pretty recent, but, like, it's the only one, I think, like, in a while that kind of feels like, you know, there's a sense of, like, family dynamic going on, like, people yeah. having, like, home life and family and stuff, like, it's like, that stuff is actually kind of pretty important for superhero things, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think the sense of family is good to have and everything, and when you have such a big universe with so many movies and shows like this why not like just start building it start building all these different things but i do still think there's too much of the interconnectedness like you can have you can have the interconnectedness but just have like you know one little thing at the end or something to connect it to the next movie yeah. there's too also, much also they're like they're really milking like multiverse concept like oh yeah these past oh, recent yeah. things like Everything has been doing a multiverse thing, but it's like... Into the Spider-Verse or whatever, yeah. They, they all kind of feel kind of... It's, it's hard to know what they're building up to because, like, they're all kind of disconnected a bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> I'll mention one weird thing about this movie. Okay. Uh, if you've seen the trailer... Well, I guess, whatever. If you've seen the trailer, um, there's, like, one line that's kind of, like... It became a meme at the time. It was, like... When Wong steps in, like, from the portal, he's like, Don't cast that spell! It's too dangerous! And then, right. like, if you actually watch the movie, I think they cut that line out, or they change the line or something, but then, mm. like, there's a post credit scene in this movie where they're teasing uh, the other Doctor Strange movie, and they actually use the trailer line again. Huh. So oh, oh is, this, so is this the same cut of that guy saying that? In both? Yeah, it, so I was like, I don't know, is that, like, has somebody changed the timeline, or is it just because, yeah, like, script things change in communication? Yeah, I don't know. But... Yeah, that's peculiar. That's just, that's just a weird detail that... I, I didn't notice that, um, but that is cool. Yeah, I had no idea. But to... Back to the ending of these movies, of this movie in particular. This has two different uh, mid-credit or end-credit stingers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the one is the trailer at the very end for Doc the new Doctor Strange film, and then the there's the one in the middle with Venom, which we reviewed Venom Let There Be Carnage earlier, with Venom and Tom Hardy or whatever the 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 unit they're together they're a team they're at a bar and they're basically they're in the universe but we just haven't seen them until this point they're in the Tom Holland universe. And they're talking to the bartender. He's like, and he's like, you know, what the fuck's going on? And the, and the bartender's telling him about the Avengers and Thanos and shit. And he's like, what? Aliens, they don't want to take over the world. They just want to eat brains or something like that. Because that's what his alien does. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of dumb, honestly. But the, they, what's kind of cool is they sort of set it up for Venom coming in some form. Maybe it's not going to be this Venom. But a little chunk of Venom of the black goo is left on the bar. So we're to assume this chunk of black goo is maybe gonna go turn into another Venom into this universe that fights Spider-Man or something like that. Um, but anyways, that I did I kinda like that. It was kind of exciting. I don't really like the, that Venom. So it would be cool to have a different Venom uh, to, to instead of doing a crossover movie with that Venom. But anyhow, whoever's just popping in, by the way, hello, this is Dr. Booty Quiver TV, the sexiest stream on Twitch. Uh, we're talking about Spider-Man, No Way Home. I'm here with Jeff on the radio talk box, whatever you want to call it. We got the, we, we got the box office uh, information here.
for Spider-Man. And obviously it made a lot of money, but holy fuck, it made a lot of money. <laughs> like, is this the highest grossing movie of all time? Probably not, but it's pretty big. 1.9 billion grossing. 1.9 billion. I think I'm reading that right. That's Yeah, that's crazy. No. One billion nine hundred and one million two hundred and thirty two thousand five hundred fifty with a two hundred million it's just like, budget. It's just crazy. It's like, like, I thought that was like a Doctor Evil, like one million dollars. Yeah, I should have done that. I, uh, <laughs> damn it. Oh well, the joke lives on with you at least. But no, this that's crazy. That's a crazy amount of money, um, man. Mo- and even the budget, like when I look at the budget, like oh, two hundred million dollars, then you know you might lose your money. But not when you're making a fucking Spider-Man movie, I guess. Hey, people are gonna go see that shit. And plus, there was so much hype with this Spider. I feel like people want to go to this one, even if they haven't seen the other ones. Although I feel like most people probably have. I feel like this got people so excited because they're like, oh my goodness, it's Toby. And, and probably less excited about Andrew. But Andrew is not the worst. I kind I don't hate his, his Spider Man. He's too sexy. But that he did he play he played it fine. Uh, anyway, I digress. He, that's why Toby. I also think Tom Holland is too sexy uh, for the role. But um, I digress. The, my point is that to, to, Toby Maguire is the best. But everyone's like, oh yeah, to, Tom Holland's a nerd. Where are the glasses though? Why ain't he wearing glasses? Yes, there's some parts where he's wearing, like, the glasses that have the technology in them in, in one of the movies. But come on, you know? It's not the proper wearing the glasses all the time. Like our boy Peter Parker, the original Peter Parker. Uh, well, the original live-action Peter Parker, I should say. Uh, Toby Maguire. Anyway, I'm, go- I'm diverging a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure I talk about everything I want to with this film. This, this is a long movie. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, we should talk about fucking Aunt May dying. Spoiler okay. alert, before I said it, but whatever. And I was shocked by this. Aunt May dies in this movie, and it's like, holy fuck. See, I, I think they don't, like, for up until now, they haven't, like, specified whether he had an Uncle Ben. Yeah, they they have not. They And that's what I've been thinking the whole time. They, they so, just, like, just yeah, this May. movie confirms that he had no Uncle Ben. And apparently yeah. there's this, like, cosmic rule across the multiverse that Peter Parker must have like a tragic death to motivate him to become or to I don't know go through a bunch of shit with, with great power comes great responsibility to, to quote the line they milk super hard but um what was I gonna say oh yeah Toby Maguire obviously is doing a good job Andrew Garfield uh, and I love their little back and forth. It's so funny. They, they say some funny shit. Because there's a point when they're all like, they're about to fight all the villains, or they're trying to cure them. That's the plot. We should talk about the plot. So they got all. We haven't really talked about the main plot. It's kind of a complicated plot. It is. I'm, I'm going to try to sum it up as easily as I can. So there's a whole bunch of villains from different universes. You got the Lizard Man from the, the first Andrew Garfield movie, you got the Jamie Foxx. From, uh, Electro from the second Andrew Garfield movie and you got Sandman from the third uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie so there's a lot of villains yeah. uh, and there's also Green, Go- Gr- Green Goblin from the second Spider-Man movie with Sam Raimi and then there's also Dr. Octopus oh Dr. Octopus and the Green Goblin I don't know if I oh whatever that's, that's five villains and so they're all have been brought into this universe because Tom Holland fucks up Doctor Strange's magic spell and he brings all these fuckers into their universe by accident. Uh, and then the, yeah, they're all in there. They gotta fight him or whatever. Uh, but they, he doesn't want to. He wants to save them. There's a point where, which why I agree with Doctor Strange. Whether Doctor Strange wants to send all the motherfuckers back because he's like, you know, it's their fate. If they die, they die. It's their fate. That's the way she goes. Basically, he says that. Uh, and then uh, he's he's about to send him away, but then Tom Holland's like, oh no, we should fucking help him and shit. And then he helps him and shit. And then it goes awry, of course. Uh, so I still think Doctor Strange is right. He should have just sent him. Um, but I get the point the movie's trying to make. Like, you should help people and stuff and try to cure them instead of just killing them. 
But there is a certain point where you should just let fate happen to a certain extent. But I do get it. If you can, if you can save a life, you should do it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm trying to make it so it's not like... Okay, we're good. I thought it was frozen. We're alive. Um, so, yeah, the, the Spider-Man's back and forth is funny. There's a part where they're all about to try to cure the Spider-Man. I mean, the Spider-Man are trying to cure the monsters or whatever, the villains. <laughs> and right before they do it, um, Andrew Garfield says he loves you to the other two Spider-Men. And the Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire are like, thank you. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, and Andrew Garfield does a good job of sort of being the most emotional and being like, oh, I love, I've never had brothers, you know. It's, there's, some, there's good dialogue and good back and forth. Uh, so Toby's kind of like the dad. Yeah, well, and rightfully so, right? He's the oldest of the spider man And I kind of, I would love a Spider-Man movie where they fall maybe even older than Tobey Maguire, but, like, let's see an old Spider-Man. Like, there's been all the Spider-Mans in the comics, from what I've heard, like, for age-wise. So I think it would be cool to be like, what is, what is like, a 55-year-old a fucking Spider-Man look like? Let's, I would like to see that. It would be something different. We see the fucking high school, college Spider-Man every single time. Um, I guess this one they went a little younger because they start in. I guess no, they they started with high school in the first movie, but then they they gradually moved him up, and I liked how they did that. In this one, he's like just going to college. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think. Well, I guess we can talk about this later too. Um, I only vaguely know about this because I'm not really much of a comic reader, but I think this movie is kind of supposed to be paying homage to like very famous like moment in Spider-Man comics where he like erases a lot of basically retcons a whole bunch of stuff at once oh, okay for like the ending what are we talking about yeah. the very end okay we'll talk about the ending soon yeah and we could even talk about it now we might as well we're jumping around all, the, all around with the plot that's how we do it here but uh yeah no at the end of the film they um and I don't know, I feel like they probably could have done something else, but whatever, it's fine. It's, it's magic. It's, it's a bit weird. Like it, it's yeah. kind of, almost kind of a like. Oh it yeah. Kind of comes out of nowhere, like like that. He he's like, oh, by the way, we can do this. And I have a so, plot. I have actually a plot hole in the ending, so I want to talk about that too. So the ending is Spider Man. He makes it so that no one remembers who Peter Parker is because all these I, different otherworldly creatures or whatever are coming to get him because he fucked up the universe by unleashing all these different people from different universes. So he's trying to stop that by just being like, okay, Doctor Strange, let's make a new spell. It's only everybody in the world. So even Mary Jane, everybody will just forget who Peter Parker is. And obviously it's supposed to create like a sad moment and it does uh, where he's saying goodbye to Mary Jane. But the problem with it and the plot hole that I found in this is, okay, yes, you can delete everyone's memory. Sure, you did, and you explained that. But you did not explain all the print media, all the video footage, everything. They explained at the beginning of the movie. There's big fo all this footage of Peter Parker being Spider-Man. There's pictures of him with the fit. There would There's the content. The content exists. So they would be able to go back and be like, oh, well, yeah, we know still because it's on rec record. But, so there's a, there's a hole in the plot. I, I, I just assumed that, that all of that footage just kind of like was retroactively erased or something. I, I, ge I guess um, that's what you're supposed well, to think, but they don't well, explain that. Me. But they don't explain Listen, that. I know that... But go ahead, yeah? Um, yeah what confuses me is uh, Doctor Strange, I think he specifies he won't remember Peter Parker like he, he himself like the, the Doctor Strange won't and this is kind of jumping movies a bit but I'm pretty sure in Multiverse Madness he does mention that he had a recent uh, incident with Spider-Man or something like that of course and so I don't know if that just means that he remembers that he talked to Spider-Man but not to Peter Parker or what I don't know is it's we this yeah. whole how this movie works is kind of confusing. <laughs> it is confusing. There's lots of different moving parts, and you have to have seen a lot of movies, really. And I think I liked it because I know the spider the old Spider Man movie so well. That's why I enjoyed it. Um, but I feel like if someone didn't know the other movies and they just 
they only know the newer ones. I don't know if yeah. they would have liked also, this, this one as much as I liked it. But yeah, go ahead. Oh, where did... It's weird, because, like, Peter Parker has become, like, you know, persona non grata or whatever. But uh, he has ID, apparently, and he can move into an apartment. Like, is he still a U.S. citizen, but has no parents or... Yeah, I could, I, yeah, at the end of the movie, he moves into an apartment. He doesn't have a social security number. There's lots of questions like that, I agree. <laughs> like, well, there's, the logistics of it aren't explained well enough, in my opinion. But that's sort of, you can let that slide. Also, let's not ignore, Kevin Smith said this should have won Best Picture on the Academy Awards. It's, it's <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, I mean, yeah, I get it. He's a big fan of Spider-Man, but still, it's just not true. <laughs> there's better movies this they were made that year, like I think. Did I mean, it or did it win Best Picture? No, there's no way it did. I don't know what did, but that it did not. <laughs> it's just like uh, it he wanted it to. That's all. Oh, I, Kev, I was like, he, did Kevin Smith just like think that happened? And if he was it? able to make it happen, he would make it happen. But no, I don't think that's real. I haven't watched this one yet, but I was just thinking about Zendaya. Zendaya, I don't know if I said her name right. I apologize. She, okay, can someone explain to me? Like, she's in... I only know her from these movies. Is she a pop star or something? Or, or like, an actor? Like, like, I don't... So Like, she's in other might stuff? Be like, might be one of those, like... I could look it up. I you guess. know, like, with the child actors, they... On, like, you know, like... Disney-ish, like, shows. I don't know. I have... I don't uh, know. I'm gonna click on her on IMDb. It'll tell me. Zenodaya... I don't know if I'm saying it right. Is it just Zendaya? Zendaya. Zendaya. I'm, I'm saying Zendaya, though. That's not like Jebediah, but Zendaya. Zendaya. That's, is that, that sounds more right. I'm going to say that instead. Uh, it, could, yeah, it was, she was a, originally like a Disney Channel. Like, how old is yeah, she? Star. She's like 20? Oh, let's look. Uh, Born 1996. So yeah. she's like... Yeah, she's like 25. Wow, she's playing a high school student. I guess she still looks pretty young. Well, yeah, I mean, Tom Holland is also like... She's old, yeah, older. she's only... I was born 94, I should know. She's only two years younger than I. Um, but anyways, yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I did not know. Tom Holland is 26. Tom Holland. I watched his Hot Ones episode. <laughs> with a chicken wing show anyway yeah it was it was it was kind of fun uh anyway i'm getting off topic Let, let's get back to the film i'm uh <laughs> like, we, well it's like i mean if we're gonna talk about adults playing high schoolers i think uh, the original spider-man trilogy oh, is yeah no, no that's a good there. point <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that real quick. I know we're not talking about the, that movie, but we have been sort of, and they're all sort of connected with this. So yeah, in that movie, especially like that opening scene when they're being toured around that uh, science lab or whatever, where Peter Parker gets bit, the teacher looks younger than all the students, and the guy who plays Flash looks older than everybody else. So oh, yeah. so it's pretty I, funny. Yeah, that that movie. I know it's like, it's still iconic, but like there are so many things in that movie that confuse me still. Like yeah. How, like everyone everyone sees Peter like doing Spider-Man shit like like punching Flash like way across the room and yet they don't connect the dots yeah I know it's crazy and I love all the different Bruce Campbell cameos and apparently I heard that his cameo in the new Doctor Strange movie was pretty funny too because obviously if Sam Remy directs it Bruce Campbell gets a cameo that's how it works uh, and that's always fun to see yeah but, I need to actually watch those uh, what are they called Bruce Campbell. The Evil oh. Dead? Yeah. Oh, you've ever seen, seen The Evil Dead? No. Oh, it's great. It's great. And the show is also good, which is a follow-up a little more recently. Ash uh, Ash vs. The Evil Dead, the TV show. Both good. Uh, but yeah, the original film series. Fantastic. Um, some of the best horror comedy of all time, I'd say. But anyways, I am running out of stuff to say. Zenodea, Mary Jane, Jerry Maine, 26. Uh, yes, we, we have established yeah, it's, that it's now. Her, her name's like MJ. I guess, like, it's, like, her name's a bit different. 
Okay, and let's talk about Ned, which is another supporting cat. So I didn't know okay. that Ned was in the comic books, and I actually like the character. Oh. But he is. He's in the comics. He's because apparently Peter Parker had a high school friend, and that's Ned. And then his uh, college friend is James Franco or Har- Harry uh, Osborn, rather. But yeah, so that's kind of interesting. How in the Sam Raimi ones, they just they just like go straight to. Harry Osborne and this one they decided to, to stick to the actual high school friend. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, well, one other thing, and I, this, you know, I'm gonna say, I've said it before, nobody agrees with me on this, but I don't care, I'm gonna say it. The red hair, I get it. Uh, I get well, why she has black hair, but they could just have a scene where she's like, oh, I'm gonna dye my hair, I feel crazy. And this like is an homage to the red hair. It doesn't have to be natural. I just want to see the red hair. <laughs> you know, that's all. I don't think that's a crazy ask. Uh, you know, but anyways, it's fine though. It's, I'm not too, I was a little, the first time I saw the first Spider-Man movie, I was like, but that's Mary Jane, but no red hair, but whatever. And she's also not Mary Jane. She's Michelle Jones or whatever. She's just MJ, yeah. which I forgot. I didn't realize that until this movie would actually say her name. Uh, I mean, I mean, they also had, um, like, younger, hot Aunt May. Yeah, Marissa Tomei, uh, which is funny. And, and it's weird, too, because you think, think about this. The first movie, or the first movies, Aunt May, with Tobey Maguire, yeah. she's super old. I think that's, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the most realistic to the comics, age-wise. And then the next one, Sally Field, a little younger, you know, still kind of old, but a little younger. And then now we're, we're this one, where it's the boom, let's just make her hot. <laughs> with, with Marissa Tomei. Boom. Which is a little weird, but it's fine, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to complain about Marissa Tomei. But I, it was sad when she died. I didn't want her to die. It's Aunt May. But yeah, that's the point. Spider-Man needs the tragedies yeah. to move that, on. That was another thing. What kind of thing that bothered me in this movie was uh, after Aunt May dies... Um, Peter does like a video chat with um, Jameson and he's like basically yeah. just uh, baiting the, the villains to come over to where he is yeah. but something that like, never comes up which I assume Jameson must know is that Peter's aunt was like the person who died in that building yeah that's true that's another good point I didn't even think about that but yeah why wouldn't he be like at least conscious of that enough to tell him, but yeah. I'm also like actually there is there's one overarching thing that's really bugged me the whole time is that it's like the beginning of the movie, right, is him exposing Peter Parker and uh him being framed for uh that guy's death, the uh, uh, Magneto uh, Mysterio. Magneto, <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, Mysterio. Yeah. Um the whole Mysterio thing. John Hall. Uh, at no point, as far as I can tell in the movie, does Peter Parker actually explain to the public, like, his side of the story that, like, Mysterio was this, just this con man who's doing special yeah. effects everywhere. Yeah, it's just, like, immediately they're like, fuck this guy. But it's some like, people are on, to be fair, they have some people on the side, but yeah. And they're, I think they were supposed to sort of trying to, like, do parallels to current society, like, how everyone's split on everything now. But, um... So I kind of get it, but I do agree that it's a little... Like, at least let him say his piece kind of thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Um, I am running out of things to say, though, about it. I think we. this has been one of the longer reviews that I've ever done, and that's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is a long movie, so there's a lot to talk about. But I am running out of stuff to say. So you got anything else, sir? Yeah. No, you're good? Okay. I am going to rate it. What would you like to rate this film? Uh, oh, it's just, I don't know, 6.5. I mean, it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I might give it a, even a little higher. Because, yes, I like I actually liked this one opposed to the other I didn't. I actually kind of hated the other two ones. But this was fun because of the nostalgia and... Mainly the nostalgia, but um, I like the way they handled. This is something I didn't say. Also, is that I like 
how they handled the nostalgia because they made jokes about the old movies like they uh, in the Andrew Garfield second movie where Jamie Foxx falls into a vat of electric eels they make fun of that <laughs> and other things that are silly about these movies and I like that I hate how in for instance Ghostbusters Afterlife they just take everything good about the first movie and they just show it to you and be like yeah like that it's the first movie it's good they don't acknowledge the second movie they should have acknowledged the second movie and made fun of the silly elements of it and that would have made that movie better. And that is why this movie works, because they made fun of the old content. Anyway, that's my little bit of a rant. Spider-Man, No Way Home, I'm gonna give it 7.5, yes. I think that's fair, because it's, I actually enjoyed it. It, was, it ran a little long. Yeah, like, I, I could push it up to a seven. I guess I'm really no. bad at these, like, no. 10 rings. Stick, stick to your <laughs> stick to your heart. There is no, <laughs> there is no wrong answer. Stick to how you feel about it. Does it mean it's a ten? I, I, I mostly I mostly bump it down just for being like part of this like corporate giant of Disney Marvel Simpsons Monster Machine Fox. They own they own a lot of good stuff at this point, it's true. Um, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So Jeff, I thank you for your rating and your words and for talking to me about Spider Man. I'm going to hang up the chat now, and we're going to finish the review, and then we're going to do some rap music. Thank you for being here, my friend. Toodaloo. Yeah. All right. Cool beans. So here we are. I'm going to put on a quick little ditty, and I'm going to sum up the movie slightly, and we're going to end. This is... Actually, let's go to the rap show music folder because it's got the good old instrumentals. This is the Groovy Girl instrumental. Here we go. From Patrick Swaggins. So, Spider-Man No Way Home. I liked it, it was fun. Heavily relied on nostalgia, but they did it in the best way possible, in my opinion. They made fun of the old content. It had some problems here and there. Some things didn't make sense. But overall, it was fun. It maybe ran a little long, but I did generally like it. By far the best in my opinion, out of those three newer Spider-Man films. If you want to watch it, check it out on Amazon Prime, as well as the other movie we reviewed today, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. It's also on Amazon Prime, so yeah, check it out if you're into it. But yeah, that's my review of Spider-Man No Way Home. 7.5 out of 10 ducks. Thank you, Jeff, for hanging today.